ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Masterclass Arena. My name is Ranjit Rajan. I'm Vice President Research for the Middle East, Turkey, and Africa region at IDC. Thank you for joining us in this uh, panel discussion titled Resilience and Transformation Underscore Smart Cities in the, in the New Normal. Developing cities and urban centers in an environmentally sustainable fashion while providing efficient and, and, and consistent services to residents uh, at scale has been a key priority for many progressive city planners and administrators around the world, including here in Dubai, the UAE, and some, some other parts of the wider Gulf region. The COVID pandemic has underscored the need for future cities to be resilient, to be able to adapt to similar disruptions in the future, which are, which are often very difficult to predict. Technological innovation um, combined with, with uh, strong governance and, and data strategies can play a major role in improving this resilience. It's also equally important for cities to ensure inclusive participation and value added contribution of diverse segments and you know, of, of, the, of the population, especially of women. In this panel discussion, I'm, I'm joined by eminent technology leaders from the UAE who are uh, directing strategy and, and driving innovation and regulation for the development of the city of Dubai and the UAE as a, as a, as a country to become technologically or technology driven, resilient, sustainable, inclusive centers of living. So let me quickly introduce my uh, eminent panelists, uh, Ms. Moza Subaidan, Director of Strategy and Innovation at Digital Dubai, Ms. Sarah Al Zaruni, Director of Data Management and Compliance Affairs at Digital Dubai, and Ms. Mariam Al Maheri, Head of UAE Center for Fourth Industrial Revolution, Dubai Future Foundation. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So, uh, Ms. Mosa, if I can start with you, the uh, current crisis created by the COVID pandemic has been an opportunity to rethink strategies for many cities and to increase their resilience. The pandemic has accelerated digital transformation uh, in, in public services with an increased urgency to, to provide and, and scale up contactless services and digital services for, for citizens, residents, visitors, and businesses. So what are the key initiatives that Digital Dubai is pursuing to make Dubai more resilient? And how has the COVID pandemic impacted your digital strategy and roadmap? Sure, thank you for the question. And I'm very happy to be uh, in this panel. Um, of course, a digital transformation in the Emirates of Dubai uh, started the 20 years ago. So back in 2001 or even 2000, we started with e-government and then uh, the expectation got higher. We moved to M-government and then we talked about smart government and then smart cities and recently uh, the launch of Dubai Digital Authority, which is announcing the next level of digital transformation. And of course, throughout this 20 years of transformation, the, 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 the city have been, uh, a lot of investment has been put in the ICT infrastructure and digitizing services and improving the quality of life uh, around the city through services and operations and so on. Um, of course, uh, in a close collaboration with all our stakeholders from the government uh, sector as well as the private sector. Uh, the time of the pandemic actually was a test uh, for all of us, uh, including, uh, you know, the government, uh, not only in Dubai, uh, actually, even around the city, it was a test of um, have this 20 years of investment actually uh, give us the benefit and give us the edge to manage the pandemic, continue operating the city in, in, in a much, uh, you know, uh, efficient and, and productive way. Um, luckily, here in Dubai, uh, I believe that uh, the, the government had been able to was enabled through the investment or enabled through technology and ICT in particular to manage the pandemic and continue serving uh, the customers, uh, of course, and uh, the customers being at actually the center of everything we do, uh, you know, with all the different initiatives and all the different strategies. Uh, and of course, even with the initiation of the Digital Authority, which focuses on digital transformation, the next level of transformation focuses on the digital economy, focuses on digital skills, the ICT infrastructure enabled by cybersecurity uh, and data. 
uh, with this new mandate, we are still uh, really looking into um, enabling the city, enabling the different sector, keeping the customer uh, at the center. And of course, this will help us become a resilient city, uh, you know, for any kind of a pandemic or any kind of crisis that we might uh, get into in the future. So um, we believe that the digital transformation that we went through helped us uh, laying the foundation uh, that really enabled us to manage the pandemic and even accelerate the, the adoption of technology, accelerate the, uh, the development and re-engineering of services to become really 100% digital uh, over time. Thank you. Uh Thank you, Ms. Mosa. I, I think I think it's an interesting point that you make that it's not just about what you uh, have been doing during the pandemic, but it's also what you have uh, done before the pandemic in order to become resilient during the pandemic. And of course, you kind of uh, strengthen your resilience, uh, you know, over uh, uh, during the pandemic as well, so that you are more resilient for the future, uh, you know, to to uh, face future disruptions. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Uh, Mariam. If I can come to you. One of the great challenges uh, of the 21st century is, is being able to find an opportunity for you know, smart environmental planning you know, and, uh, and understanding the complexity that it may represent and also approaching it from different aspects of, of urban planning, sustainability, um, resilience, and of course, you know, improving the, you know, the whole smart city um, paradigm and, and, and uh, initiatives around that. How do you think a city like Dubai can achieve smart growth that is based on sustainability and resilience? And also, you know, what are the challenges that need to be addressed for Dubai to accelerate? Sure. So maybe first off, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here and, and to be a part of this panel. Maybe I can start with the challenges and then talk about you know, how we can use technology, particularly for the solutions. From a challenges perspective, the UAE, Dubai, and the Gulf region are considered arid city-states. And what that means is basically the climate is so humid and so hot that it leads to a lot of the infrastructure not being able to kind of sustain that. So, you know, we have thought about this, I think, from a municipality perspective, from an urban planning perspective. Uh, there is a new urban plan 2040, which looks at greening um, the city more, adding in things like more mangroves and the likes. But it is a challenge that we're facing and a challenge that I think the world is facing with climate change. Um, I mean, we've definitely seen that more with more natural disasters taking place now. So one of the things that we've been thinking about from a smart city perspective is that what kind of technologies can we use to actually help reduce things like carbon emissions and the likes. So for example, you know, you, we've seen that irrigation actually is one of the uh, contributors to our high carbon emission. So how can we cut down on water costs? This is something like putting in place a smart grid so you can understand where it's, did, do you need more water? Where do you need less water? Where can you implement that? Same thing with electricity. You know, we have a smart grid system for that as well. IoT sensors have been used on uh, street lights. Um, we've also seen that things have become more automated, right? So you can have, you, you would see this in the, any kind of apartments you go into now. If you go into a floor, the floor lights will turn on. When you've left, they turn off. So these kind of small things are this implementation of technology to manage this. On a larger scale, particularly from like a renewable energy perspective, uh, which obviously we want to shift towards uh, to ensure more sustainability. AI is being used to make sure that things are more efficient. So AI can basically manage the patterns of where do you need more energy and less energy. Uh, we are using blockchain here uh, within the Future Foundation. It's something we're looking at for the verification of renewable energy. So again, are we really using the energy that we claim we're using and how do we verify that? I will say though, all of this technology does have a downside. It does also lead to, to more carbon emissions at time, particularly blockchain itself. So we have to be able to mitigate that as well. So while we're implementing this, we need to also be thinking about the responsible use of it. And so for example, one of the things that we're hopefully looking into um, in the next few months is how do we ensure a carbon efficient blockchain? And what are the things that we need to think about when we're using this technology and when we're thinking about sustainable cities. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Mariam. I think, I think that you know, it's an interesting point that you make. I think there's, there's a lot of learnings that the other 
you know, cities uh, with, with similar, uh, you know, climatic uh, conditions can, can learn from, right? So uh, in terms of the weather patterns, uh, I mean, there are, they, uh, could be other cities which have, which have similar weather patterns and so on, uh, but also the use of technology, right? Uh, so the use of emerging technologies to, to really support sustainability. Um, that's uh, some very interesting initiatives that you, that you mentioned there. Uh, thank you for that. Um, Ms. Ms. Sarah, if, if uh, I can come to you next. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the, the data foundation is, is going to be critical for any, um, you know, city development or any smart city um, development. Um, so unlocking value from this data by, you know, open data sharing, uh, creating monetization opportunities for the ecosystem and, you know, leveraging um, technologies such as uh, AI and machine learning will become critical for, for future cities. So what are the key elements of, of data regulation and management that, uh, that Dubai is planning to adopt to uh, meet future needs? And again, what are the challenges that you face in implementing data strategy at a, at a city level? Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm really glad to participate in this panel. To answer your question and building on what uh, my colleague Moza said, Dubai was ready because they have done a lot of work in the previous uh, eight years. So we started the establishment four uh, to five years ago. Uh, and our aim was just really build a holistic data ecosystem. And we were operating uh, through three main uh, areas. Is, I would say first promoting a clear and decisive uh, data governance. We have launched a set of uh, data law uh, regulation, a set of policies and standards for everyone uh, to follow in the city, whether it was government entities or private sector, which plays a really uh, big role in the city. Uh, two, we have uh, the sharing and enabling uh, uh, exchange of, of, uh, of data. Data. And that was done through uh, two uh, main areas. I would say the building the ecosystem, which is investing in some data a network of data champions, uh, investing in educating them and getting them ready to use uh, the data in the city. Two, we had a smart data platform called uh, uh, Dubai Pulse, which is a platform or uh, a secured platform where all the exchange of data in the city happens uh, through uh, our, this platform where you can have open data that is open for the public uh, that they can use and come up with with solution and uh, insights uh, for the future or whether it was a shared data which is exchanged between government entity uh, uh, to be ready for any uh, crisis or uh, 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 insights uh, and uh, some dashboard that will help decision uh, making the third pillar that we have really uh, as well uh, focused on was the advanced data analytics and uh, uh, we have a, a team of data scientists that uh, we serve the government entity uh, in uh, uh, having this team uh, doing uh, an advanced analytics for the government entity. We have worked, for example, during the pandemic in, uh, uh, in developing a dashboard, which is a COVID-19 dashboard, which helps the city uh, leaders to take the right decision at the right time, whether we should lock down or not using the data that were available in this uh, uh, a smart uh, platform. So I would say Dubai was ready uh, 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 for the future by uh, doing all these efforts these years, and uh, COVID-19 has uh, uh, proven uh, proven that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I think that that data is uh, uh, is is a key a foundational element for any any city that's that's aspiring to become a, a, a city of the future, and of course. Uh, data will play a key role in uh, in, in, in providing uh, greater, you know, better, and more more efficient personalized services to citizens, residents, visitors, etc. But also to uh, to to improve the resilience of the city itself overall uh, in terms of you know, uh, so it can become really a uh, a, a data driven city. And so all as you mentioned, some of those you know all those decision makers will have uh, you know data available to take those decisions as well. That's uh, you know the the dashboards that you mentioned as well. So uh, great, great initiatives. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Ms. Moza, if I can come to you next, and I, I want to talk a little bit about the participation of, of, uh, of women um, in, in, uh, in uh, driving technology uh, initiatives uh, and, and also women in leadership positions. So the participation of, 
So the participation of various groups, you know, especially women, is critical to the development of a broad-based digital economy. Um, so how can digital transformation and advanced technologies uh, improve inclusivity and you know diversity in a in a future city? And 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 in what ways does you know does this digital Dubai support support inclusivity? Of course, uh, thank you for the question. So uh, two parts uh, to this. So the, the first part is actually um, uh, we are, the women in the way is, is blessed with a great support from our leadership. And we have been always uh, part, an integral part of the development of the of the city and or the Emirates or even the country uh, in general. Um, a lot of investment has been put in place to really enable uh, women, enable at different ages even to, to really uh, be part and actively participate in the development of the communities um, and really leverage the opportunities that are given to them, not only in ICT field and technology field, but even in all the fields actually across uh, the board. Um, when it comes to ICT in particular, um, I think, uh, you know, uh, myself, uh, Ms. Sarah and Ms. Maryam are uh, great examples of women in leadership and uh, in, in different organizations. And there are many more examples uh, like uh, like us here who are really participating and driving transformation in, in governments or even in private sector. Um, when it comes to ICT in particular, to be very honest, um, the development of the transformation uh, is really built on the capabilities of, of the individuals and the people who works in the sector, regardless of their gender. Um, of course, women plays a major role, but uh, the development of any sector including ICT is built in the capability, whether being a woman or man, it really comes back to the capability and what you, you know, uh, bring to the table, uh, your thinking, your mindset, your passion to change uh, what drives transformation. Um, of course, with additional support for women, we are very much enabled to, to take the transformation to the next level. And we are really blessed uh, in UAE to have that kind of support. Um, the other side of, of this, uh, you know, uh, 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 of this topic basically is uh, the more digital transformation uh, adoption uh, around this, around the city and around the, actually globally, uh, it also reduces the chances of, of bias. Uh, it also gives an opportunity to to have a diverse talent pool. Uh, as I said, regardless of the gender, um, there are certain uh, talents and skills that are required to drive transformation, which can be, you know, uh, collaboratively, uh, collaboratively developed by both uh, sides of the society, I would say that complements each other. Um, so digital transformation absolutely promotes inclusion, uh, not only based on gender, but even based on the different segments of the community, different categories of customers. Uh, and of course, uh, here in Dubai, uh, as I mentioned, we customer it is at the heart of, of the transformation. And even at a government and service provider uh, point of view, we also make sure that our resource pool represent all the different segments and all the different uh, categories of, of, uh, of uh, the community. Um, and I think um, this kind of collaborative and co-creation of the transformation, the future of the city, promotes uh, you know um, a higher level of return, uh, benefit to the society, benefit to the different uh, you know categories, individuals, businesses, uh, and of course promotes even more innovation um, and of course uh, more employee engagement, more community engagement, and so on. Thank you, Ms. Moza. Uh Ms. Mariam, if I can come to you next, and, and I want to continue with uh, you know, our, our discussion on the topic. Um, so the, the UAE is, is, is emerging as a, as, a, as a leader in placing, uh, in, in placing diversity and inclusivity at the core of its government, uh, with, with, a con with a continually growing list of women leaders or, or women in, in leadership positions in the UAE. So as the UAE and, and, and Dubai in particular strive towards the uh, fourth industrial revolution, what will be the impact of the fourth industrial revolution on women's participation in the digital economy? Thank you. I think um, Ms. Moza went through it very nicely. I mean, she talked about the inclusivity and particularly around bias. Um, one of the things I would say that we've seen as an impact and actually this case is, is not just with the participation of women, but again, kind of a larger discussion around making uh, 
or technology being able to make things more inclusive is a, a project we worked on around uh, smart toys. And so it's a slight divergent from the, from the question, but the reason I bring it up is just, it's a good example. What we found is that AI is very helpful um, in terms of tailoring its curriculum, of course, based on pattern recognition and machine learning to um, a child if they have something like autism or a learning disability. And so by implementing this kind of smart toy or this um, robot with the child, the child then is able to kind of engage in a way that perhaps they couldn't outside or you know, in a social circle where they might've been more nervous to do so. And again, the reason I bring this up is because I think it's a very good example of how technology can actually make an impact in terms of making a society more inclusive and more diverse. And with, with or if we can come back to, you know, you mentioned the participation of women, you know, this is an example of something that we're doing right now where we're being able to have this conversation um, on Zoom. Of course, it's something minor and this is regardless of gender, but I think it's an example of how you know, we are able to connect more now across the digital infrastructure. And with other things like VR, for example, you know, we've seen that there are um, medical schools that use VR to teach surgery. So if, you know, if I was in, let's say, a rural area that was unable to, and I was unable to, for example, attend a school in a big city, I could use that VR tool that's been provided by the school and learn how to um, do that surgery and learn how to practice as a doctor, of course, with the right medical um, certifications in place. So I think the technology pro is providing us with a more, um, or at least more of an, of an opportunity, right? To, to reach things that perhaps we weren't able to before. But again, I do wanna come back to, I think that that is a, something that is, uh, universal and social and not just you know in terms of the participation of women but the participation of all um segments of society and in and in giving that opportunity to all segments of society thank you, you know, i i agree with you i think that uh, uh, digital transformation and, and advanced technology kind of provides access uh, and uh, you know uh, offers the opportunity for participation for various different segments of society um, and of course women are included in that um, and, and and also create the, you know, provide the uh, opportunity to not just participate but also to contribute uh, and you know uh, to the uh, to the country and to the economy as a whole uh, thank you so much uh, uh, mariam for that um uh, Sarah, if i can come to you um so digital dubai uh, has a high percentage of uh, women employees and there are many women in in technology leadership positions uh, you know like uh, like you yourself and Ms. Moza. So what do you think are the, uh, are the enablers for this? And what advice would you have for other uh, you know, national leaders, governments, uh, and so on? Uh, and, you know, what, what can they learn from, from your uh, organization and uh, from your experience? I'll keep my uh, advice short and simple. I would say, uh, all what you need is a supportive leadership that creates and empower uh, uh, and create this empowering uh, uh, environment, whether it was for women or men. And uh, my advice would be regardless whether it was a woman or, uh, uh, or men, uh, you need to embrace uh, the emerging technology and adjust your uh, uh, skills to move forward in your career so you don't uh, uh, be left behind. So you have to keep yourself uh, with all the technology competency updated and build uh, your, your uh, I would say, technology uh, uh, network and ecosystem uh, with, with others. So this is generally whether it was a woman or, or a man. Uh, uh, all what is needed is a supportive, I would say, leadership. And Moza has already have uh, uh, touched uh, into this point, say that, if you have the right environment uh, for everyone to uh, to uh, to be empowered uh, to uh, engage in, in, in uh, these sectors, uh, uh, you have got it all. I would say. Thank you, thank you, Sarah, for that. Um, as we as we come to the you know, towards the end of this uh, discussion, I want to um, you know go around the um, uh, panel and you know I want to ask you this question. And maybe I can begin with you, uh, Ms. Moza. Um, so looking in, looking ahead into the future, um, how do you see diversity and inclusivity evolving in the 
in the digital economies of the future, both at a, at a, at a city level as well as at a, at a country level. Of course. See, the, the future of, uh, of ICT uh, or digital transformation that actually enables inclusion, uh, this question used to be, you know, somehow easy to answer. Uh, I think the last two years uh, proven to be totally different than what we expected. Priority changed. Uh, digital transformation got uh, scaling, uh, got scaled up, got accelerated. Um, so in my opinion, I would say the future of this transformation and an aspect of inclusivity, um, I see more digital transformation uh, scaling up to different uh, aspects of life uh, in a city. I see cities really focusing on connectivity, uh, you know, in the city itself in terms of operations and services. Uh, I also would see probably higher adoption of digital services amongst the city regardless of the different segments. I think higher adoption of those digital platforms would also be you know, one of the key enablers for us to even move forward. Uh, I also see probably ICT contribution to the digital, to the economy of the city. You know, The digital economy as what we call it, is something that will pick up and we'll be able to actually really identify what is the impact of ICT on the economy, which also impacts the quality of life uh, of all the citizens in a, in a, in a city we're probably gonna see more an increase in the digital skills for both genders. Uh, and all of this is actually gonna lead us to more uh, you know, advanced kind of transformation and more inclusion and more, of course, uh, you know, a coherent kind of ecosystem um, that drives the quality of life in, in the city. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Mariam, again, a similar kind of question. So gazing into the crystal ball, how do you see diversity and inclusivity um, evolving and progressing in the digital economy of the future? Sure. Well, it's always difficult to come after Ms. Moza because she always has a really coherent answer, but I'll try to add something slightly different. Um, I think for us, you know, inclusivity, there, again, I'll go back to the work we talked about with the smart toys. I think we're going to see digital skills becoming more and more important. We'll also see digitization kind of take over everything, including education. So perhaps it's not to replace teachers, but again, these sort of um, applications to support and, and make education easier and more comprehensive for students who perhaps have been struggling at the moment. Um, I think from a you know, automation perspective, we're going to see a lot of jobs changing. A lot of things will become more and more automated, but that means that we're pushing people to become more and more creative about how they do their work and the skills that they focus on now. And I think from a women's perspective, one thing I wanted to add is it is wonderful to be able to see other women in this field because you do see them as role models and then you're more likely to go into a field. So I think we'll see more and more women in perhaps sectors that we didn't necessarily see them in before, energy, uh, manufacturing, and, and things like that. And that will, I think, push more and more inclusivity and diversion as well. But again, as I said, Ms. Moza really did give me a comprehensive answer. So I hope that's something additional that I could add to. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and finally, uh, Sarah, to you, how do you see the, the uh, future of, of diversity and, and inclusivity um, in the context of, uh, of uh, future city or, or digital economy? I would say the disadvantage of being the last one to answer that they have covered it. <laughs> However, I would say the, the type of skill set that we would need in the future will definitely uh, differ. Uh, the, the type of job that we are doing as well will, will definitely uh, differ. Uh, we have done some studies here in uh, Dubai Digital Authority on future skills and what are we are predicting in the future will happen, uh, things are going to uh, change massively. And during the pandemic, uh, there was a lot of highlight uh, for us uh, uh, as an experience that we would need data. I remember uh, going back to uh, all uh, the government entities and private sector asking for the data, and we couldn't uh, back then uh, uh, visualize how this data is important and the value of data. But after the pandemic, all our decision was based on data and most organization was a data-driven organization uh, uh, as uh, as in uh, for future so we will see more digitization and and uh, and, uh, and services and i think more future skills will be required uh, uh, in future 
Thank you so much. I think absolutely right. I think uh, there's, there's the, uh, you know, the uh, digital economy of the future will require, uh, you know, greater participation of various segments uh, of the society. Um, and, you know, data will be a, it will be a foundational, uh, you know, element to that. Uh, and of course, all of this will need uh, a lot of talent and skills. Um, and, you know, from, from all different segments of society, women included, of course. Um, but it's wonderful to, to uh, have you all on this panel. Uh, thank you so much for your time, uh, Ms. Ms. Moza, uh, Ms. Ms. Mariam and Ms. Sarah. Great insights and a lot of examples there. Uh, I hope the audience has, you know, has, has, has enjoyed this session as much as I have. Uh, thank you very much. And you know, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, joining this session today. Um, enjoy the rest of the event and uh, have a great day ahead.